The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Truly a favorite. He's coming into town. Filmmaker Joel Gilbert. And his second film, There's No Place Like Utopia. Of course, the first one was Dreams from My Real Father. Uh, Joel, good morning, man. Welcome to the show. Hey, Peter. Great to talk yeah, to you and yeah. looking forward to coming to Denver. Yeah. Um, locally, there's this website that everybody was ripping and sending us stuff, and they're attacking you and attacking Dr- Jerry Corsi, who's going to be on the radio show as well. I think a lot of this attack is taking place because, you know, first of all, you're bringing the film into town. But second of all, I think you're getting, as we say, closer to the bone. But um, they uh, they attack you and attack Corsi. Now, one of the things that is being, I guess, shown on this website, and people sent it to me this morning, is some, some piece from two years ago uh, entitled, Even Birthers Don't Believe Jerry Corsi Anymore, about the story of Obama's ring. And uh, then also they go after you uh, about the... Um, the, the, the pictures of Obama's mom, allegedly his mother, in the nude as a young girl, high degree of probability taken by Frank Marshall Davis. Now, you faced all these uh, criticisms before. What would you like to say about both of those things? Uh, well, there's no question that uh, if you don't have people going after you, you're not successful. So the fact that I agree. Uh, they're coming after us with anything they can think of to try to discredit the truth is a sign of success. I want to point out that I was also attacked by BarackObama.com about a year and a half ago where they made a broad attack on me and the film, but they never denied that Frank Marshall Davis was Obama's real father. I thought that was very interesting. In fact, BarackObama.com had sent out an email to all their supporters saying that they would like people to register for a contest to have dinner with Barack Obama because they might find out more interesting things about him, Mm -hmm. and they gave an example that his father taught him to love jazz music. Right there, they sent Mm -hmm. it out. I got a copy of it. And uh, the jazz aficionado was Frank Marshall Davis. He was a DJ on a jazz station, uh, collected jazz records, knew a lot of jazz singers in Chicago where he was a leading communist before he came to Hawaii. So uh, there's even BarackObama.com is... uh, promoting this idea that Obama had a strong connection to Frank Marshall Davis, nor are they denying that Davis is the father. Now, the uh, article about the ring, uh, there's mm-hmm. no question that the, the gold ring that Obama wore from age 15 uh, is apparently, uh, we could tell from the writing on it at the time, that it appeared to have a, an Arabic inscription on it, which was very common, uh, especially if he got the ring in Indonesia or was given to him by his mother, for example. We know that he lied about it and said that it was a wedding ring that he mm-hmm. received at his wedding, but it clearly was something he wore from age 16. And the inscription on it changed over time. Uh, later on, it looked like snakes, but earlier it was Arabic writing. Mm-hmm. So that's something that was covered. And uh, the issue regarding the mother, there's no question there's a mountain of evidence that the nude photos that I found uh, were of his mother. Uh, I went in the house where it was, uh, they were taken, uh, I got one of the floorboards that no, no, matches no. the floor. The uh, All the jazz records match. You can see Frank Marshall Davis's coat in the background. The pictures of the face, the mother, identical. So uh, they've, they've tried again in their desperation. Uh, I think some guy found an anthology of these old magazines mm-hmm. from 1998. And the dates in that anthology were all over the place. I had the original magazines, and the dates were correct. So that's what they're trying to make a case of because they don't want to deal with the fact that Obama's biological father was not the Kenyan Obama. It was this uh, Marxist communist supporter and Soviet agent named Frank Davis. And more important, Davis became his ideological mentor. And we're seeing that play out in his entire life history all the way to the White House. Yeah. I'll, I'll read this to you, and it's being reprinted here, and it's two years old. But it says, for months, as part of his campaign to sleaze against Obama, Corsi's been promoting Gilbert's Obama-hating, I love the words, Obama-hating film Dreams from My Real Father, which claims Obama's father is actually a communist poet. They put that in parentheses, Frank Marshall Davis. And Obama's mother, Stanley Ann Dunham, posed nude for him in photos that were published in fetish exotic magazines of the era. But judging by the fact, of course, he never quotes Gilbert, backing up his claims with facts, it appears this film is nothing but conjecture 
and speculation based on photos of a woman he can't even prove is Obama's mother who posed nude for Davis. It's nothing more than a sleazy smear piece designed to make money off of Obama haters. Now, uh, go ahead if you would. Yeah, I I would comment that Obama's book, Dreams from My Father, uh, is a vast conspiracy uh, nonsense. There's no evidence to show most of it is true. Uh, Even in the the preamble to the book that we think Bill Ayers had a big part of, uh, he even says this is a lot of composite characters, everything is not necessarily true. So Obama's book was meant to cover his real history as a, uh, in the little known world of American Marxism from age 18 all the way through his history as a revolutionary communist in Chicago and in New York. Uh, my film, Dreams of My Real Father, is a much more realistic uh, d- depiction of his life story Dreams from his real yeah. father, following in yeah. the footsteps of his father and mentor, Frank Davis. That's I, how I look yeah, at it. Sure. I don't doubt for a moment that that's his mother in those pictures. I don't doubt for a second that Frank Marshall Davis took those pictures and that she is um, kneeling on the floor and she's in the nude. And the weirdness is the reconnection when he returns from Indonesia the first place that Gramps takes him, or one of the first places, is to reconnect with Frank Marshall Davis. Now, there's meaning to that. Absolutely. Um, and I don't know what the meaning is. We can only speculate, but that's, that's Stanley Ann in, those, in the nude. She's in the nude, and she's a kid, and um, I don't know what it is that these guys can't, I guess, can't deal with, but all they can do now is write this kind of thing. You know, I thought, what the hell? You know, they want to write it. We'll put you on the show to talk about it. And Jerry's coming up in a little bit. Um, but the ring story, I mean, I remember when the ring story changed. I remember when the ring story was one ring, and then suddenly there was really another ring, wasn't there? We think it was the same ring that uh, he probably had adjusted over time uh, because uh, of the Arabic writing mm-hmm. on it. It seemed like it was something very close to him. If you see pictures of Malcolm X all those years, Malcolm X had an Islamic uh, ring that he wore on the same finger for many, many years. And we know that Obama worshipped Malcolm X, read all his books. Mm-hmm. So it seems to be some uh, connection to that, that world. And the fact that he lied about it and claimed it was a wedding ring that he received from Michelle further indicates that... Uh, but he's wearing it before he knows Michelle, right? Oh, age 16. Yeah, you can that, see it in photos. Yeah. Age 16, Occidental College, age He's wearing 18. the ring, that's right. Yeah. He wears it throughout those years. Right. So... Uh, it probably is something that he used as a uh, but close to that world. What, what strikes me, and we'll go to the movie, is if this is the best you can do, I'm saying this to the people who want to attack you, Jerry, Jack, everybody else, if this is the, all you have... Is yeah, the, if they just want to throw yeah. out and say, well, we don't have the DNA and we weren't there when the nude photos were taken, if you want to throw that out, there's still a mountain of evidence sure, that's uh, that the Kenyan yeah. was not the father for sure. We know that, uh, documented, well documented. Uh, there's a mountain of evidence that Davis was the biological mm-hmm. father. Throw that out, and we have all the evidence mm-hmm. that he admits well, he was raised by Davis. Yeah, I mean, but if the best you can do is that the ring doesn't look the same as it did, then, you know, I guess, but again, going after you. But like I said, I think this is this drumbeat is happening because you guys are getting closer and closer. There is no reason to fight back, and they are fighting back now. There's no reason to fight back if, there's, if there isn't any, you know, any sense of, a, of, a, of triumph. So I, I, having said that, and we're going to talk to Jerry about the same thing this morning because he's getting that attack as well. But we have the new film coming to town, and take some time with that if you would, please. Okay, this is called There's No Place Like Utopia, which is kind of a takeoff on The Wizard of Oz, There's No Place Like Home. And uh, this film is uh, a film where I I go throughout America, and I talk to people in these cities that have been taken over by progressives for 50 or 60 years. I go to Detroit, Southside Chicago, Newark. I'm in Denver. There's uh, a lot of footage in Denver. And I talk to people who have been living in these progressive cities, and it turns out no one has been progressing. They're all regressing. They have drug cultures, 60% unemployment, uh, bankrupt cities, uh, on and on, nothing but problems. Uh, So I talk to these people, and we look at the roots and reality of progressivism and also the history of progressivism, uh, the roots in communism. 
and how it came to this country and how it kind of comes in waves where it gets a lot of support, then it goes away. Then it keeps coming back like a thief in the night. So I, I show how over the past 30 years that progressives took over the Democrat Party to the point that the Democrat Party today is a radical socialist party. There is no opposition within the party. The leader is considered to be God on earth. He's above criticism. Everything he does is perfect. And they use the tools of state to suppress opposition, to keep a permanent hold on power. And that's the big picture of the things we spoke about earlier, that in order to take power, socialists have to build their support on a lie. In the case of Obama, he lied about his personal background. He covered it up because he knew it would be unacceptable. And he lied about his agenda. He said he would cut the deficit in half. He would have the most transparent government in history. He would respect the Constitution, on and on. So just like the Wizard of Oz, he, he's a charlatan. He never intended to keep any promise. And if you recall, uh, Dorothy, when she got to the Emerald City, the wizard sent her to the witch's castle and she was taken prisoner. So we look at history in the film and show how when people follow these magical wizards to utopia, there's going to be paradise on earth if you follow Mao or Stalin or Castro or Pol Pot. When they got to the end of the rainbow, they ended up in the gulag or you know, in collective farms starving to death. So this promise of utopia by socialists is just a nightmare that they have to cover up with lies and then once they get into power, just like they use the IRS, they use the tools of state to keep a hold on power because no one would ever have supported this. Nobody voted for anything that Obama is doing today. It's all built on a, on a, uh, a castle of lies, and that's what Obama represents today. The, the film opens here uh, July the 18th, if I, my schedule is correct. Correct. We've got a three-week run minimum, and okay. it's going to be at the uh, Colorado Center 9 in IMAX uh, next to Dave & Buster's. Very cool. And we're going to have a big opening uh, weekend. I'm going to be there in Denver. Okay, we'll be with you for that. And, um, again, I, I just think it's amazing. I don't know why. Maybe because the new film's coming. Maybe because it people are getting... You know, as Obama's... Um, as he drops into polling data, as... His support is is eradicated, and watching the insanity in Iraq, which isn't all his fault, but he's riding the cow now or riding the riding this thing to the end. Perhaps this is why the the the, the staunch Obama supporters are now you know coming out with these stories and these pieces and these these attacks. Well, they come out with emails. I'm on their email list. I encourage everybody to get on the Barack Obama email list, and they regularly ask people to have his back. Let's have his yeah, back. No, I, I've seen a lot of Well, I guess sent a lot of that. Yeah. So yeah. you have to think, though, that from Obama's point of view, he is successful. Even mm -hmm. though we think he's not, his goal was to agitate. He's a professional yeah. agitator. He wanted to divide the country on economic and racial lines. It's the same thing they did in Chicago. The theory was they would divide people and then use their discontent to take power. Mm -hmm. So everything Obama does is to agitate and divide the country. Mm -hmm. From his point of view, he's doing it successfully. Mm -hmm. That's why he's so happy and pleased with himself while everyone else thinks he's doing something wrong. Uh, there's an email here my, to me. The birthers are not just wrong, they're also cowards. Um, geez, I've invited so many people on this radio show in studio Birthers are not just wrong, they're cowards. They can't be overtly racist, so they veil this in this ridiculous conspiracy. Now, again, that's the last place the scoundrel goes, is not to have to deal with any of the facts of this man's life or the cover-ups, but simply you and I, and I guess Corsi and Jack Casho, whomever, are simply racist for asking questions. But I'll just read you the, the first... Um, Two periods, um, or two sentences, rather. The birthers are not just wrong, they're cowards. I can't tell you how many people I've invited to come into the studio face-to-face, -face, not even over the phone. They went over the phone, that's fine, but face-to-face -face and discuss the facts of his life. Now, they're the, well, they're the ones that won't show up. The second sentence is they can't be, you can't be overtly racist, so you veil it in this ridiculous conspiracy. What do you say to that? Well, let me make two points. First of all, the term birther is, is a smear yeah. to simply categorize people that I guess you 
might think Obama was born elsewhere. Yeah. But, but really, all people did was ask a question. Mm-hmm. Now, my research and evidence shows that he is probably eligible to be president no matter where he was well, born. I because agree. I agree. His, he has two American parents. So, I agree. Uh, the absurdity of referring to throwing me in a uh, so-called birther crowd. Uh, the only color I have a problem with with Obama is the color red, and the, not black or white, but red, because uh, he lied about who he was. He lied about his agenda. He manipulated the electorate with these ridiculous lies about all these good things he would do and bring mm-hmm. people together and cut the deficit and never had any intention of fulfilling those promises. That's the problem people have with Obama. And the only color I have a problem with, again, is his the color well, red, his red but ideology. You see, but you see, and you know how this game is played, um, the, uh, I marginalize you by calling you this horrible name, and so having done that, then I depersonalize you and your work, so no right-thinking person would ever listen to you or watch a film or listen to Jerry Corsi or listen to Jack or, you know, I, I, it's a pretty big list these days, but you guys are all just these racists. And, I mean, this email is interesting. I, I can't believe anyone would take this fabricated nonsense seriously. That's another email this morning. Well, I, I take it seriously. And um, I think that a person who, that's an unsigned email, but they could walk into the studio any morning we could have a conversation, but of course, that's not going to happen. So I just wonder, you know, and uh, as we get closer to you being here, I'm sure the drumbeat will get louder. It'll be interesting to see if the uh, Denver Post or any of the outlets, the people who review view movies or television people will even talk to you. Well, we've had, we, we are entering, Peter, an era of what I call Soviet censorship, the way things were in the Soviet Union where uh, certain opinions, only if the opinion matches the official government position is it allowed to be expressed. Uh, we have the Minister of Propaganda and oh, Jay sure. Carney every oh, day yeah. spouting all this why, nonsense. Why do you think he bailed? Do you think he'd had enough? Uh, I think he certainly had ambitions to uh, become uh, U.S. Ambassador to Russia. He speaks fluent Russian. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, there may be a number of reasons that the number of lies he's told They've probably done some polling on this, and the amount of lies he's told have gotten to the point where yeah. uh, he's completely illegitimate, and yeah. nobody really listens to him anymore. So that's a sign for them to simply put a new liar in there, and they feel like they have a fresh start, kind of like they did with the IRS. They well, got I, a, a yeah, new guy there. Yeah. I kind of think I saw him as kind of a Ron Ziegler guy, guy in the end, you know, where he had told so many stories for Nixon that he himself had gotten disgusted. And, I don't uh, think so. I, I think it was he was no longer effective. He would talk and people would just laugh. It was yeah. that bad at that point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm, I've entered the uh, world of censorship in Denver. If we have time, we can start talking about that. Uh, we we are starting an ad campaign starting this Friday mm-hmm. on all the Denver radio stations and many TV stations. And uh, we were censored by the KUSA. A uh, local nine news NBC affiliate. I, you know what? Well, I was going to guess it was China. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to bring Jerry in with you. Channel Nine would not take your money. Correct, and they told us that the ad was a political ad because Obama was in it, and we had to fill out a form oh and change the ad uh, that were. I, a, guys, uh, I, I, I could have bet that Channel Nine, that? Channel Nine would not take the ad. They said it was a political broadcast, even though there's no candidate running for office. It's just a film trailer, yeah. and I'm a media entity. I'm not subject to these kind of regulations. I'm not advocating for a candidate, but they're saying I have to I, uh, I, sign to say which candidate I, it's supporting. I, I would have bet it was Channel 9. Hang on. Channel 9. We'll, we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back with Jerry as well. Uh, Andrew Gaz, and what, didn't you know that? Wouldn't you know that? It was Channel 9 that said no. Of course. Of course. All the sense in the world. If somebody said, what television station in Denver won't take that ad? My, I would have guessed Channel 9 first. Please say good morning and welcome to Denver. First of all, Dr. Jerry Corsi joins us, and he has been on the line with us. His filmmaker, Joel Gilbert. Joel Gilbert. First of all, Dr. Corsi, good morning and welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Peter. Great to be back with you. Yeah, I, we're talking about um, Joel is bringing his film here for a premiere on No Place Like Utopia, he's the one, of course, who did, as everyone knows, Dreams from My Real Father. We find out 
And I'm not shocked, knowing Channel 9 as I do, uh, that Channel 9 will not take his money. Who Was there anybody else that will not let you buy time? That's the only one. Just Channel 9 said it's a political ad, and it has to uh, have a political statement about which candidate it's supporting. It makes no sense. Uh, by the way, uh, Jerry Corsi is also featured in the film, There's No Place Like Utopia, as well as Peter Boyles. You're in the movie, too, from my interview there yeah. in, in Denver. And Jack Cashel's in the film, too. Jack Cashel's in there, uh, David Horowitz, yeah. uh, uh, very well known, as well as a former KGB agent, Konstantin Priebojensky. Uh So there's a good mix of, of people and experiences around the country. Now, here's a question I'm going to find maybe find an answer for. I wonder if Channel 9 ever took commercial money from Michael Moore. It's a good question. Maybe Jerry can find that out. Uh, uh, I, I doubt they I'm would. I'm not refuse. sure. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, the basis for rejecting uh, Joel's commercial is pretty weak because uh, you know there's no campaign going on right now, and uh, Joel's film is really not aimed at any political candidate it's aimed at uh, the ideology of the left promising utopia which is of course you know translated from the original greek and latin words for this wonder place means nowhere it doesn't exist that was the whole idea of utopia is that it doesn't exist yet the left promises it and that's the premise of joel's film mm -hmm. Uh, we're, we're, and yeah, but apparently it, it, that, just, that's not a, that's not in terms of that's not a campaign no, theme. No. no, but you know it's like remember when we were kids. Now Jerry and I can say this used to be a thing that would say it was it was banned in Boston, and uh, there was a, a list a Catholic Church would put out of books they didn't want you to read when we were little guys or movies they didn't want us to see, and I guess maybe Channel Nine has taken on that position for Coloradans. But having said that, it's their you know, it's their money. They can or their business, they can do with it as they choose. It'll be interesting to see if they ever took a nickel from Michael Moore. It would be very interesting. Also, I mean, you know, it's obvious what's going on. The uh left, which is um Joe Joe Goldberg wrote a book of, of just a while ago saying uh, liberal fascism, and the left does not understand. They want to say fascism is right wing. The mm -hmm. truth is, no. the the totalitarian, the ideological purity. I mean, look at the left in terms of their determination to demonize anyone like Joel or me um, for disagreeing with them. The left is intolerant. It does not believe in free speech, and any more than communism believed in free speech mm -hmm. and that's one of the themes also of joel's movie so the left is doing everything they can and will continue but I, to but do I, so to but keep I joel's what, movie from the public yeah i mean i wonder what nine's thinking is um you know denver colorado is a democratic city it's less didn't democratic used to be it did not use well to but it would be going back to i guess federico pena when he becomes mayor right. although the mayor before he was was a he, but he was an old school Dem. He wasn't a uh, progressive Dem. Pe Federico was, and it's been that way well, since. I mean, going back into the 40s, 50s, yeah. well, 60s, I mean, it, it, yeah. the, the um, movement of Colorado to the left uh, comes with a lot of the yeah. migration from California and the oh, university sure. structure within and California. Money. Money and came money. Yeah, I money mean, came the, yeah. But the point is that, um, you know, the, the ideological purity of the left is going to both resist uh, and, and be upset by Joel's film, oh, sure. uh, you know, on Utopia, as much as they're also going to resist Dinesh D'Souza's film mm -hmm. on America. And the irony for the left that they're going to have to face is that this boomerang is the more they attempt to attack Joel or Dinesh D'Souza, the more audience attention they're going to get from people who want to see these films. Let me bring this up. Jerry, as you know, you've gotten back into their crosshairs as well. Uh, you, one of the things that uh, Casey did was send you that link of that yeah. website. Uh, they're hammering on you, and these guys are digging up stuff from 2012 about you and the ring. And I think some of that has to do with you again are close to the bone. Um, the ring story we talked about it with Joel. Your thoughts about the ring story, which seems to be this, given getting their panties in a knot. I think about. Well, I'm you know, convinced. I mean, it was something I discovered that 
Obama had been wearing this ring that he claimed was his wedding ring with, you know, with Michelle, but he'd been wearing the identical ring since since he was in college. And when I researched it, it had basically the Shahada, the, the prayer inscribed on it, which is, you know, there is no God but Allah. And the, the ring then, as this attention came to it, the White House very conveniently said the ring was out for repairs, and when the mm-hmm. ring came back, the original design on it was obscured, so you could not read it as you could originally. But we managed to get some old pictures of the ring, and I think it's very clear that the reason Obama had this ring for so many years and is, and is wearing the, that ring today is because it was originally uh, an Islamic prayer ring. And uh, I'll maintain that it was obscured, because of the attention that I and others brought to it. And, um, you know, this was a, again, anytime you attack Obama, the left goes insane, and the left's typical reaction is to attack you rather mm-hmm. than, because they can't discredit your message, typically. Sure. And usually the left just then attacks you and tries to marginalize you as a reporter. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that I think Joel's film is really important for because it focuses on how the left lies and how the left attempts to seduce people into thinking that if they, you know, just give over power to government, everything's going to be just rosy. That's interesting. Yeah, and I, we're I, seeing I, it. Go ahead. You say, please. I'm sorry. I was saying we're actually seeing this film play out in Denver as we attempt to show the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Channel 9. Uh, has this ideology that there can only be one voice in the room that's their voice. Well, but I, I, you know, I'm kind of an expert on watching Channel Nine work. I have there's people there I really respect their their abilities, and but uh, they have had a. Um, we had an example here. There was something called Denver Players Denver Sugar, and it was a, it was four houses of prostitution. And I got a a tip from a good friend of mine. The guy who ran it is actually moving back to town. Long story short, there's no question in my mind that the mayor of the city, Michael Hancock, was uh, was buying prostitutes. And I think, you know, we got pretty close to that. And Deborah Sherman was a reporter at Channel 9. Her, her career at Channel 9 ended over that story. Uh, a lot of people's careers were jeopardized over that story. The, the mayor himself ran into the arms of the Denver Post and a prominent law firm, Brownstein Farber, and they protected him. Having said that, there's no doubt in my mind that mayor uh, and by they were going to sue people over saying this, and I've yet to see the papers, but uh, that Mayor Hancock was buying prostitutes. And like I said, in and of itself, so what? But I think it's all these powerful, very powerful, the power elite of the front range was also buying prostitutes. And when the Post and the law firm and Channel 9 and others protected all of this, the principal reason, I believe, was not so much the mayor, although, you know, one way or the other, but more about the other powerful men, the power elite of Denver who, or, or of Colorado, who were also, you know, you know they, were, they were players, and Denver players, Denver Sugar. But so nine played out in that. It, it, not, nothing shocks you anymore. I mean... Um, oh, I, but, I was shocked. When I came to Denver, I was shocked on, uh, on many things. The, uh, the Denver really is a become a proving ground for the progressives oh, all sure of Colorado. Is. Sure it is. We visited, uh, and it's in the film as well, people can see it, we visited Abraham Lincoln High School mm-hmm. where Obama actually came and gave a speech and declared this is the fastest growing high school in America. Well, it was 99% Hispanic, whereas we interviewed a guy who went there in the 60s and it was 99% uh, Caucasian. So the, uh, the demographic change uh, is also something that the socialists and the leftists are trying to take yeah. advantage of, as we can see playing well, Denver, out on the borders today. Denver, it isn't so. I don't, you know, I don't care one way or the other who goes to school. But what Denver has become, under Wellington Webb, who replaced Federico Pena, was sanctuary city. They proclaimed it. The next mayor was John Hickenlooper, who's now the governor. Uh, said lied. He said he didn't know anything about any proclamation. We showed it to him. Still didn't matter. Hickenlooper um, is a open borders advocate. He is a sanctuary governor. What's happening right now, and tomorrow, by the way, is the primary, and the guy in the wings is Tom Tancredo, and his party, the Republican Party, is spending tremendous amounts of money to stop him dead in his tracks, Uh, but that's for another day. But 
None of these media guys have any problems taking those uh, anti-Tom Tancredo paid for by Republican uh, funders of Republican 527s, but then they come to you and they won't take your film, won't take your money. I think it really lies with nine. I think I know how they operate, um, and it doesn't surprise me. Uh, they've done things like this in the past. So having said that, uh, maybe other guys will take, you know, as, as any other television station um, s- refused your, your, no, your money? No, it, it's the only one, and it mm-hmm. just shows the hypocrisy of the left. We had a situation in 2012 where we offered uh, $90,000 for a full-page ad in the Washington Post for my film, Dreams from My Real Father, mm-hmm. simply saying this is the number mm-hmm. one documentary on Amazon, and you can go buy it. It was a product for sale sure. in the marketplace. They, well, they, you got rocks thrown at you and Jerry and this Internet site, too. I need to put you guys both on hold. Take a turn around and we'll come back. I want to bring up that Parade magazine, the thing that they interviewed that happened yesterday or with the Obamas. Jerry Corsi and Joel Gilbert are with us. And that's news this morning. Channel 9 uh, won't take Joel's money. Does it shock you? No, it doesn't. This is 710K in U.S. All right, back to the guests. We have uh, with us, Jerry Corsi is with us, and, of course, Joel Gilbert. Gilbert's bringing his film to town, No Place Like Utopia, we found out moments ago. Channel 9 will not take his money. Uh, Apparently, other television outlets will. It makes all the sense in the world if you know how Channel 9 operates. They would do nothing to offend the power elite or certainly not to uh, offend any powerful Democrat. Um. This piece that appeared yesterday in Parade Magazine, I was stuck on this one because they ask about his book, Audacity of Hope, and Jerry and you know and Joel knows that a high degree of probability, it's Vegas bet, he didn't write the book in the first place. But then they go, and they this question, which I'm sure he had in advance, strange in your marriage. And he said, look, this is the president. We had Malia, and three years later we have Sasha at that point. Our student loans are still more than our mortgage. Michelle's working full time, etc. I have three jobs. First of all, as Jack Cashel said, they had they had money, but this story on his student loans, Jerry, you're great at this. Um, what student loans? Well, see, that's the interesting thing, Peter. If we can um, find out there were student loans, let's see the documentation of the student loans, because they may well include that Obama applied as a foreign-born student. We know that mm. Obama had his publicist in this period of time when, you know, right after he was finished with um, um, Harvard, he was uh, advertising his books as uh, born in Kenya. Mm-hmm. And we have that in print. Oh, sure. For years, the publicist was saying Obama was born in Kenya. Well, did Obama say that he was born in Kenya to apply to Occidental or to Columbia or to Harvard as a foreign student, and then thereby derive student loans based on his foreign-born status? We don't know, because no one will ever let you see Obama's records. This is the problem. Yeah, and how would you know? And again, when I saw this yesterday, I realized that, you know, Parade Magazine's a lay down in the first place, but the president talks about his student loans, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. There's never been any evidence of a student loan. There's never been any paperwork or paperworks because all of those things are under lock and key. Uh, the courts have suppressed them too, have they? I mean, so what do you do? How do you deal with that? Well, again, it's this is the most undocumented president we've had in American history. Can't get his grades. You cannot still see the original 1961 birth records. All you can see is a computer PDF the White House issued in 2011. Uh, you know, the, and Obama constantly makes these slips where he has his publicist publicize that he was born in Kenya. Obama, during the 2008 campaign, says, my Muslim faith. Oh, yeah. And, of course, everyone then immediately, oh, no, no, you mean your Christian yeah, faith. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, I guess I meant my Christian faith. You know, and, you know, the, these are the kinds of cover-ups that have promoted Obama uh, into the White House and through two terms when... You know, you have a very extreme leftist liberal president here that the uh, media have worked overtime to prevent the American people from uh, realizing how radical Barack Obama truly is. Uh, Jerry, there, uh, and uh, 
there's actually more evidence that we do have is that uh, Obama's academic career, the evidence we do have is that he was probably supported by this Arab academic funding network uh, run by Khalid al-Mansur. Vernon Jarrett, who is Valerie Jarrett's father-in-law, was, of course, worked with Frank Marshall Davis in Chicago on the uh, communist newspapers. He's the, uh, the one that had communicated with Khalid al-Mansur, who talked about helping Obama get into Harvard. Oh, yeah. So the, the little evidence we do have is that Obama's academic career was funded by these Arab interests, and then they handed him off to the Arabic political funding network with Resco in his political career. That's as much as we know. And, and the part that he said about buying a house, well, we know about that whole Resco thing, don't we, Jerry? About the Yes, we fully yeah. investigated yeah. that. There was a deal with Tony Resco, sure. who's now in federal prison. Indeed. And by the way, the other part of Obama's career is that he will neglect and drop all those who supported him and promoted him. Uh, I've made this point over and over again, even though Obama gets 90-some percent of the African-American vote. Uh, African-Americans have never suffered so badly as they are currently in America, neglected and you know, they can get all the, give people Obama phones all you want, but it does not give people jobs. It does not build families. It does not build wealth. It builds right. dependency. And again, this is one of the major themes of Joel's film. It's why I think mm-hmm. the left is already so, you're going to have two films this summer. I'm following very closely in WND and reporting on both, and I'm going to make every effort I can to be at Joel's premiere in Denver. Um, well, we'll, we'll, we will all be here for that, and maybe we can do a great roundtable show that morning here on 710 and then go to the, uh, then all of us perhaps, obviously not all of us, but certainly you and I will be at to see the premiere. I want to see the film. But right. it's, as we leave, Channel 9 would not take the money, which is, like I guess that's Channel 9. Um, if I believe, I'll tell you what, if it was an attack film on uh, on a Republican, my money's on, they would take the film. Both of you guys, uh, you're being hammered on on the Internet, so you've got to know you're close to the bone, right? As, uh, it's a good indication. Yeah. I mean, I, the, it's, it's amazing how the left um, amuses themselves with these silly critiques sure. and distortions. Well, of, they, like I said, if that's the best you got, that's you, ain't, a, you, ain't, you, know, you ain't got enough. If this amuses, um, you know, the... Us? The radical left to Huffing. do this kind of, it, but Huffing. all it does is reinforces yeah. how ideologically intolerant yeah. Yeah. left is, and it's a great background for viewing Joel's film. Talk to you guys, thanks. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.